is recording. Oh, my hair's all messed up. All right. <sighs> no Brent jokes. No, I, I don't believe it. If you go a whole episode with no Brent jokes, I feel like there's like a last longer bet there. <laughs> yeah, no, I... Why am I making promises I can't keep? Yeah, stop it. <laughs> All right. Looks like we kind of got everybody. That's, <laughs> yeah, where's my money? I don't know if we can answer that question, but we're going to we're gonna try to answer some other real hard-hitting <laughs> where's questions. Where's my money gone? I think it the, was just here like two seconds ago. Yeah, if it was last December, think about how many people we'd have in here like chatting it up with us last December. <laughs> They told me crypto was going to go to the moon. I now my bags are empty. And something that rhymes with moon. <laughs> Where my country gone? All right. Uh, all right. It's 11.04. Maybe we'll do one more minute and then you can kick us off. Uh, no, nah, we got enough people in here. Let's just, we can start talking. They'll, they'll trickle in. They'll join us. Uh, we are we are without Mike today. He had a little hospital incident, so he's not going to join us. But so it's Kareem and I. We're um, we're the Crypto Basic Podcast. If you haven't popped in here and listened to us before, we we have a podcast. We release a couple podcast. times a week. We do some news. We break down some coins, and in here we specifically look at the R cryptocurrency articles. And we uh, we talk about what we like and what we don't like about the best articles of the week, or, or the highest highestly upvoted articles of the week. I guess that's not always the best articles <laughs> of the week. This is the first time we've had this uh, this juiced guy in here. He might be the, he might be great, or he might have just really hey, left for real. No, I told you five seconds. Welcome back, juiced. I was preparing <laughs> for your return. All right, Brent, why don't you kick us off? Uh, enough. They heard who we are, what we do, blah, blah, blah. We talk on mics. All right. Boom. Yeah, we talk on mics. Let's That's it. it. Let's do it. Let's let's roll. This is the first one. This is. A, I'm going to start us off with a bullish or bullshit, Kareem. I'm gonna s- bullish or bullshit. This is my favorite game that we play. So the – wow, somebody was able to talk. Right. That was interesting. Uh, so, the, so the bullish or bullshit game is pretty simple. I read the title. And then Kareem tells me if the title is bullish or bullshit. Actually, I guess this wouldn't be a bullish title, but um, French crypto tax plan just got rejected. French will need to pay 60% if cash out more than 30K dollar. Insane. Well, okay. So I'm not even really sure what I'm calling bullish or bullshit on here because – so I guess – is it true that if you cash out more than 30k, you would owe 60 percent? It sounds more like this is an income tax thing. Like if you earn over a certain amount. Um, all right, I don't want to read ahead. I don't want to read ahead. I'm gonna say bullshit. Uh, the Grindlord, the episode did say thirty thousand dollars, or or the uh, the not the episode, the um, the title did say thirty thousand dollars, and you said bullshit, Kareem. Any reasoning behind that? Um. I'm going to say that there's a little bit more nuance to this. Like, so I'm assuming that France has some kind of capital gains tax or some kind of investment tax, which I don't think would be 60%. I think maybe the 30K is only if they're counting it as income. So maybe a certain profit level. I don't know. It just seems, I, you know what? All caps insane in the title just makes me lean bullshit. Yeah. That, so that's exactly what I was thinking when I read the title. I'm like, this person put insane at the end of the title, put it in all caps. That means it's bullshit. Uh, yeah, it is. It's basically bullshit. It, it is basically bullshit. Kind of the, there were pieces of this tax initiative that were rejected. They had like, a uh, they had a tax initiative there that was going to make it 30% flat across the board. Currently it's 60%. However, the part that's going to make it 30% across the board was not rejected. Uh, the, the, don't worry. You know what? We will let Juice talk. We, there is going, we're going to save some time at the end of the episode for him. So, d- you know, get ready. He's a ripple shill. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, we're going to let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, the, uh, the plan wasn't completely rejected. They had a bunch of stuff on this bill, but in the U.S., it either all goes through or all doesn't. For whatever reason, this they can they can do specific parts of the plan and let those go through and not others. Uh, they made it. They wanted to make it so that if your crypto was never put in your bank account, it wasn't taxable. 
they rejected that. So if it's in an exchange, you have to pay taxes on it. And they also rejected some special rules for exemptions on losses and stuff like that. But the 30% tax is still on the table. So, uh, yeah, that that whole... I mean, it's not... The title's not wrong. Currently, they do have to pay 60%, but not because this was, for whatever reason, rejected. So... So, but Brent, just to be clear, they have to pay 60% if they cash out more than 30K? Or where does the yeah. 30K come in? Uh, it's, it's just their capital gains tax, I think. I think that just crypto is part of their capital gains tax currently, and they were hoping to... But what, for the year? Did you... Were you yeah. going to see that? Is that 30K for the year? Yeah. Like, if I... Okay. All right, fair enough. So, it, yeah, it's not like you couldn't cash out like 29,000 like 10 times or something like that. So, my favorite yeah. comment uh, is, what is going on here? My favorite comment is, there we Come go. On, okay. I was having a hard time posting that. If you're, con if you're in France, you should consider moving away anyway. It's a general rule at all times. So, <laughs> I actually think this may be what the riots are about the, in France. I think everybody's really upset that they have to pay 60% on their gains on crypto. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not what the riots are about. I can oh, confirm. Oh, no, wait. The riots are about the, the fact Jack... that the crypto is <laughs> it's... all the way down. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There you go. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure you knew the real reason. Um, yeah, anyway. Totally not people pissed off at bankers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Side good. note, side note real quick. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, um, we are also poker players and at the Hard Rock in South Florida, there's been a ton of French and Spaniard players coming in. And I was literally just talking to a French guy yesterday that was talking about uh, how much he wanted to get out of France now. So, wow. Just confirming, confirming your story. Coincidence that you were going to go over the story and I talked to a French guy yesterday? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think know. so. I think that there's some I'm fate there. Um, are, are there any French coins? Uh, mm. Has there been like a French ICO? Uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, C S B C H C. Well, yep. Cist. Which hard rock in South Florida? The one in South Florida. There's only one hard rock <laughs> yeah, in South Florida. A Hollywood hard rock, yeah. Yeah, and there's another hard rock in Tampa. So there's two hard rocks in Florida. Yeah, the Tampa uh, one's more Central Florida-ish. All yeah, right, yeah, enough yeah. enough about the French coins. We got sh people shilling. The CST, <laughs> BCH, bro, said BCH. <laughs> and, and, and Kui. Uh, yeah, they got lots baguette of great coin. stuff. Baguette coin. Oh, how could we forget about baguette coin? Yeah. All right, so. It's a fork of story. garlic coin. Brent, this was huge news. Huge, huge news. Okay. Oh, it doesn't do the little thing. All right, so the new U.S. chief of staff once said that Bitcoin is good. So obviously this is massive news. <laughs> it was at the top of the <laughs> so all right, so well we'll make a little fun out of the story to go a little bit in depth. First of all, if you guys don't know who uh, Mick Mulvaney is, he was Trump's uh, management director of management of budget, and then Trump got in a little fight with his chief of staff. No. It, yeah, 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 yeah. So he fires the guy. All right, <clears throat> and he thinks that he already has a replacement, which was Mike Pence's chief of staff. But it turns out that most people don't want to go into sinking ships. Sorry for any of you that uh, <laughs> might disagree with that analysis. <laughs> so the guy turns him down. Then he goes to Chris Christie. I don't know if you know who that is, Brent. Like one of the most unpopular. Just to give you an idea how much nobody wanted this job. Yeah, yeah. Chris I know Christie, it was like his 10th choice or something like that. Yeah. Chris Christie left office with a 15% approval rating in New Jersey. 15% <laughs> approval rating. I'm not even exaggerating. And he wanted to be a part of the Trump White House. He Trump goes to Chris Christie and he's like, yeah, I know. I got to do stuff, my my family and stuff. <laughs> All of his kids are adult. So anyway, we finally get to Mick Mulvaney, who basically takes the job in the interim. And all of that article was about how in 2016, Mick Mulvaney said some good things about Bitcoin. And he was kind of like passive. He's a big gold and silver guy. And he was complaining about how the Federal Reserve is devaluing the dollar. And then he just made a little side comment that was like, yeah, cryptocurrencies are really good because they can't be manipulated by any governments. So, of course, this uh, statement, now that uh, <laughs> now that everybody's freaking out, like any news, any positive news that we can hold on to, uh, you know, people have to freak out about. So 
uh, let me see. The other the question is: Is Mick Mulvaney's pro Bitcoin position good for Bitcoin? And the answer is no. It's almost completely irrelevant, guys. Like he's got no influence on the SEC. He's got no influence on the CFTC. And more importantly, he's probably not even going to be chief of staff for more than like three or four weeks because another thing <laughs> that came out. It, that, another thing that he said that very same year was that Trump is a horrible human being. And the tape, it didn't come out until after Trump announced that he was his new chief. Oh, my staff. God, that's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. So obviously he can't like immediately fire him, but you know that that shit's eating up uh, at, at Trump already. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that turns out. But if I couldn't pick one favorite comment because there were so many. Like, okay, I want to share this little exchange here. They're all Trump impersonations, but they're really fantastic. <laughs> The first one is uh, watch watchmaking over here wrote. I'm waiting on Trump tweeting about Bitcoin. Like, Bitcoin is great. I uh, first heard about it in 2010 thanks to my good friend Satoshi. I'm the biggest whale. I know it. You know it. Everybody knows it. <laughs> and then the next person's like, No, no, no. It's gonna be like tremendous people at Bitcoin. I mean, really, just the best people. I've known Satoshi for a long, long time. We go way back. And, uh, well, first of all, nobody knows more about Bitcoin than me. It's true. Ask Satoshi. And basically, the whole thread was a bunch of on-point Trump impersonations. So I recommend you guys go check it out. <laughs> oh, my and God. And, yes, by the way, Grindlord, Chris Christie is the one that closed an entire bridge in order to get back at a political rival in a neighboring town. Um, and he's also the one, by the way, if you want to look up, a, maybe I'll look up the picture while Brent's doing the next story, but he, there's a beach that was closed down to everybody in New Jersey and his fat ass just took his fucking family there randomly when he was like almost ready to be out as governor. So he's like using the private beach that was closed off to everybody else to just like take his family on vacation. Like he's such a piece of shit, dude. Yeah. Yep. Uh, U S politics is, um, fun to watch if you're not. If you're not if you're not up on it, just get in there. We are idiots. Watch watch us flail around and do idiotic things. All right. Now, while, while Kareem is looking up the picture of Chris Christie sunning himself on a beach, uh, whoop! Nope, somebody already found it. Yep, there we My go. My man. <laughs> um, we're gonna talk about China's crypto ban maybe failing. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> No, yeah. Look, there was an, it's another one of the top stories on Reddit this week. Let me get you the link. Rotch here. It is. Uh, it says there's 7.5 million Chinese crypto cryptopians, so the China's ban may have failed. Title's a little bit misleading. I don't know what a cryptopian definition is supposed <laughs> to be. I would, Anyone that has a Satoshi or more, I believe, is the yeah. definition they're using. If if that is the definition, I don't even think that it qualifies because what they're using as the definition is literally the number of people that have downloaded an app that's related to crypto is 7.5 million. So it's roughly 0.06% of the population. I would not say that that's a huge reason that the – position or that their position on banning it didn't work i think that that's kind of non sequitur but there are a couple things that we can glean from this uh the 7.5 million people is pretty high on the uptrend they've been going up 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 exponentially each quarter um the distribution is not what you'd expect in crypto uh 20 percent of the people are in third tier cities 27.3 we're in fourth tier cities or less, meaning that this this crypto app is being consumed almost majority by the poor rather than uh, rather than majority by the rich. But single people doing it, maybe that's not that exciting. Um, and again, that's just downloading the app. That's not actually buying any crypto. It's it's the equivalent of like tweeting, not even tweeting Bitcoin. Like you can download this app and not even care. Just because it was a suggestion, you didn't know what it was. So, um, it's so wait, they're defining it. The the seven point five million is just people who've downloaded this app, or yeah. this is they're oh my god, they can't what nobody can admit story. to owning bitcoins. I don't think so. It's not like they can look at wallets and usage and that kind of thing. But the, the they 
it means something. It means that people are downloading a crypto app, but you know, it doesn't mean really much. Uh, it it does kind of show you that the argument that oh, the, the governments are going to ban crypto, so it's a scam, is not is kind of nonsensical. If anyone in China is using crypto, which we know that they are, um, and they, uh, yeah, so that's. That's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to my my favorite um, comment here. Unless did you have any more commentary Kyle. before I get to that? No, I mean wh- when you were saying to the 7.5 million, like 0.06 percent of the population, I was just multiplying here. We have 330 million people or something like that. Right. So that would be like 180 thousand people in the states, which is not even the size of most major cities. Right. That that's nothing. It it is very. It was a very sensationalized title that um, that wasn't wrongish. So if we were saying bullish or bullshit, it it, it <laughs> Juice is trying to get a South Park reference in there. Bad, like you don't literally call me Cartman every day. Juice, we, we Juice, we cannot do South Park references. We're dealing with the China problem. Okay. Yeah. Continue, Brent. Thank you. Okay. So uh, where where was I? I got before I lost my train of thought here. Oh, I, the title wasn't You're like talk about your favorite comment. Yeah, but the title wasn't exactly misleading, but it, it was. I mean, it was like it was just only technically true. It's barely bullish at all. Um, this is my favorite comment uh, from TK Ovla twenty three. China's crypto ban on crypto is like when they square private body parts on their porn. It is there. You just <laughs> need to use something else to see it fully. So this is my favorite comment for a couple of reasons. One, it's racist as fuck. Racist as fuck because the Chinese aren't the ones that do that in porn. It's the Japanese, and uh, and two, cri- porn is completely outlawed and successfully because their firewall makes it damn near impossible to get to anything like porn or say Facebook. So. Yeah, uh, China did successfully porn for block porn. If we're comparing uh, crypto to porn, I don't think that's a great comparison. And well, okay, hold on a second though. So I have a question for you. This is completely no evidence, no nothing. Are you telling me that you think that there are less than seven point five million people in China oh, that consuming have been able porn? To, to, consuming porn? <laughs> yeah. No way. Bro. No, yeah, yeah no way. It's the over. I don't know if they're using VPNs. I don't know if they're just reverting back to like smuggled Playboy magazines and just fapping to like what we were fapping in the 80s. But there's no way that there's not at least 7 million people in China that have access to porn. I refuse to believe it. <laughs> there you go. Well, all right. You know what? They don't have access to porn, censored porn because they don't have to. That's a, okay. That's side a note country. before we move on to the next story because I, I kind of you triggered something. Um, have you ever seen, there's like, I don't know, I'm pretty sure it's Japanese, but isn't there like an entire category of porn that's just like girls licking doorknobs? Have you seen that? Did you ever I that? have not seen girls licking doorknobs, I don't think. I, I mean. I feel like that's a, like, that's a very specific thing that one of the, I don't remember which one it is. What kind of porn sites do you look at? Well, obviously Japanese porn sites, Juice. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> look, there's some there's some no. weird porn out there. I don't know about I don't, doorknobs doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but neither does you know eels. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Listen, I find it just as weird. I don't know if it's something about it being dirty or something. All right, you know what? We're getting off yeah, yeah. the rails. Uh, Grindlord made a good point. In China, he thinks that they do a bunch of uh, thumb drive drops, which I have. I've been to Cuba and I've seen the package. That's what they call it. it. They there's like some shady guy in everybody's street that has these thumb drives and charges you like a dollar a week to get all of the stuff on the thumb drives, like UFC fights, um, sports, and all that stuff. So so also my... yeah, actually, now that you're saying too, we were just recently in Thailand for a cryptocurrency conference, and when we were walking the streets, we saw that people were you know street sellers had things like thumb drives and, and porn DVDs and stuff like that. But you could easily not do the DVDs and just have thumb drives loaded up with porn and sell it pretty cheap because, you know, it's probably not hard to make. Yep. So that's so. that's interesting. People, porn finds a way and crypto will find a way. And maybe porn and crypto together will find a way. All right. So the next story was a 
prediction by Charlie Lee. This was one of the big things that everybody was freaking out on our cryptocurrency because this is something that Charlie Lee said last year on a tweet. The flippening that is Ethereum overtaking Bitcoin will never happen. But the flappening Litecoin overtaking Bitcoin Cash will happen this year. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the date on this tweet. I'm a little disappointed on my researching skills. Normally, I would have. However, I did want to see. Yep, Grindlord's already putting in the link to the flappening watch. And for those of you that don't want to click, I took a screenshot of Coin Market Cap today and look at look at the Satoshi Lights prediction over here. Litecoin has officially overtaken Bitcoin Cash more by standing still and watching Bitcoin Cash and SV destroy each other. But whatever, <laughs> a win's a win. <laughs> Right. And also, um, I do remember that there was a time I, I think we even talked about it on the show, Brent. I, I, I want to say Mike or you, you guys were much more bullish about Ethereum overtaking Bitcoin. And here we're, we're like, at yeah, like one seventh, like I not even close. That was one of my like crypto year ridiculous predictions. You know, when I made a bunch of them and expected like one to come true. I think one did, but not that one. So, uh, yeah, that was it very clearly misinformed and it became very clear very quickly that that was not going to happen. I don't, I do not ever, I agree with Charlie. I don't ever expect that to happen in the future. Um, do, have you seen some of the other stuff he's been right about? No, I actually haven't. I don't really pay attention to him that much. I know he gets a lot of hate and a lot of love. I'm kind of neutral on him, whatever. Uh, you know, I don't have an issue with him, but I, I haven't followed him a ton. So what, what else is he? Well, been right about? so he sold, Litecoin basically at the top, right? So he was yeah, he was sure. right about that. But then he also said, "Look, guys, if you can't stomach Litecoin going to twenty dollars, you need to not invest in Litecoin. We everything is inflated right now, and twenty dollars is like legitimately possible." I'm I'm paraphrasing the tweet, but he literally was like, back when Litecoin was like two hundred dollars, he was like, "If you can't take this going to twenty, you shouldn't involve, you shouldn't be uh, investing." And if you look today, Litecoin is twenty. <laughs> wow that's so, pretty sick yeah i i also saw another tweet where he talked about that the first time that he bought bitcoin bitcoin was at 30 dollars, and that he watched it go all the way down to two dollars and that he was holding at two dollars for a while and he said something along the lines of like oh and i didn't complain to satoshi about it either <laughs> or something like that <laughs> um but yeah i guess the you know he's been in the market a little while longer um and i I think it makes sense. Contextually, we could look back at the history and you can say, oh, Bitcoin has already dropped 90%. Um, but I feel like it's different if you've lived through it. Like if you bought Bitcoin at $30 and you saw it go down to two and you stuck through and then rode it all the way up to fucking 18, 19, 20,000, which now in retrospect is, is insanity. Watching it go back down to 3,000, you know, your experience in the cyclical nature of this market I think allows you to stomach it much more. Yeah, yeah. He he's and he's been I mean Litecoin's been there for so long. So uh oh no, Juice, we're gonna have you talk on the end. If you really leave, this is the worst. Um You're the man though, Juiced. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, sad <laughs> face. Well, hey, don't be sad. You needed friends and you just made two. So you're leaving <laughs> with friends, Juice. There was a there was definitely another tweet that he made that was like prophetic, and I can't remember what it was. Um, it might have been that he started to call the bear market because of the futures. He was like, "Look, the futures contract expire on this date. Be very careful of what happens after that date." And it was like, as soon as that date happened, it was like, <laughs> so. No, yeah, yeah, I do, I do remember that uh, prediction as well. He was so. I guess I should maybe just start listening to him. Maybe I'll follow him on Twitter. I don't know. Yeah, follow him on Twitter <laughs> because he's not great to watch speak. We saw that when he got on that blockchain cruise with Roger Veer, and they were kind of like having a debate. He got fucking destroyed, not with the context of what they were saying, but like the way they were presenting it. Roger was a much better presenter than he was, and Roger was saying stupid shit, but. He was saying it in a much uh, more charismatic way than Charlie was able to, and Charlie was just like, "No, you're stupid. Like this is this is what it is." So, uh, yes, definitely follow his tweets rather than like I don't know if he has a YouTube channel, but um. I will say it is kind of in a way it's kind of depressing um, for people like you and me. We really do value like, oh, we want things to be logical, we want things to be factual, we consider ourselves very skeptical, uh, but 
it's crazy how much just pure raw charisma or even sometimes brute force can destroy an argument, even if the other person's right, or even if the other person has the facts on their side. I've just seen, you know, quote unquote, good debaters or charismatic debaters destroy somebody who actually has the right position because they just don't know how to speak, you know, and it kind of sucks. But. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, definitely. I mean, look, Ty Lopez, <laughs> you know, oh. people like that, yeah. like they they speak well, they've got some charisma. <clears throat> That's how they get where they get. So, you know, Carlos Matos was very charismatic. Look at that guy. I mean, hey, 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 don't be don't. Don't talk about our boy, okay? Don't you mean? All right, hey, move. Hey, listen, hey, hey. Hey, hey, listen, move along. All right, leave Matos alone. Okay. All right. So, Trip, ooh, we got a story here in development. I'll, I'll check it out. Brent, you want to tell us about TripAdvisor in the meantime? Okay. Yeah, I, I was planning on talking about TripAdvisor, which is totally related to crypto. Um, now, so here was the another post. Oh no, I didn't get. Oh yeah, here it is. There we go. This is the TripAdvisor related post and i thought this was interesting because the the title of this article is TripAdvisor contains more than 600 million fake reviews analysis from fake spots machine learning algorithm found that one in three reviews are fake and in the article or, or in the title it also says blockchain is a good solution um and the overarching kind of response in the chat i'm going to bring that up first rather than later uh is no I, I haven't read that yet no um is why a review is a review you can slip fake ones into the chain like any other one and the people in the in the chat are kind of saying well look th this is another one of those things that like doesn't need to be on blockchain this isn't better on blockchain we don't need TripAdvisor, but on blockchain here's the I thing i disagree actually yeah yeah oh yeah we're i'm disagreeing right off like the a bat. motherfucker yeah. <laughs> so this is actually, in my opinion, one of the primary things that blockchain can help fix. And this is going to be one of the first ways I see a use case for blockchain because fake Reddit accounts, fake reviews, fake news are all legitimate concerns, legitimate problems that need a solution and don't have a good one right now. There is no way to verify that somebody on Reddit is a real person or a, or a bot. If you go to this particular site right here, uh, one second, I should have had this ready, but um, this right here, you want to manipulate what's going on in the R cryptocurrency subreddit? You can buy 50 upvotes for $13 right there. Um, you want to buy downvotes? You can do it the same. I, I looked into this because- Okay, just real quick. I had never seen this, but right off the bat, I can tell you 50 votes for $13 you're overpaying for your upvotes, okay? <laughs> for sure. There are more efficient ways to get upvotes. Believe me. Continue. Yeah. Well, well, listen, 500 is only 60, so, you know, it scales pretty pretty ah, heavily. gotcha. Um, I, I looked into that because one of my posts got, like, it went from 60 upvotes to zero in, like, an hour, and I was like, can they just, like, buy those? And I, and I found out that they could, so that was interesting uh, this week. Um, so, anyway, there is... Uh, like things like ontology, things like civic are creating identity situations on the blockchain. The reason those are important is it doesn't matter if we post a review on the blockchain. What matters is if a review site integrates with blockchain in such a way that they can prove who you are without getting your knowledge, getting the information. So if they use a zero knowledge proof to prove that you're a real person and that you've been verified as a real person, then they can say this person's verified as a real individual. Now, that system can be gamed as well, but it's going to be a lot harder to game that system than it is creating an email address on 10minutemail.com and now all of a sudden you have an account, right? So Yeah, and go ahead. No, go ahead. You, you, you go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so there's multiple things here because, number one, one of the big problems with something like TripAdvisor is not just the fact that there are fake positive reviews but one of the other problems is that there's an incentive for TripAdvisor, the centralized institution to extort 
uh, businesses yes. by giving them an opportunity to delete reviews, right? So if we had it on a blockchain, number one, we would have a way to guarantee that if you're opening up a review of a restaurant or a website or whatever it is, and there's 100 reviews, I know for a fact that there weren't really 300 reviews, 200 of which they deleted because they were negative, right? So right off the bat, that's one way in which the blockchain system can help. And then the second one is not only can you verify that they're real people, like you were saying, Brent, but if you have that identity where that, per, you know, kind of like when you go on Amazon, it's like, oh, this person is a verified reviewer or they review a bunch of things. Well, you could have a profile and an algorithm that measures how often they review things and average reviews and things like that. And it would give you an idea of whether or not this is a real person doing real reviews, a customer, or if this is somebody who's literally going on a hundred thousand different totally unrelated things, giving five star reviews across the board, and therefore very likely being a low quality review or a bot. Right. And there's here's another pain point with trip with TripAdvisor and the like that I've discovered from from running the, uh, the escape room business. When you're low on reviews, there are companies that will come give you a bunch of fake reviews and then call you and say that they're a marketing company. And they noticed we had some some bad reviews, which would be like two stars. And they would say, "Look, we've got some bad reviews. Uh, our our company specializes in getting rid of those. If you pay us a hundred bucks, we'll start attacking those reviews and try to get rid of them. And then magically, if you pay them a hundred dollars, it disappears, like literally the old mafia protection scheme, but done with done with reviews. So review systems and star systems are rife to be tackled and fixed." by blockchain technology i know there's some companies that are trying to do it there's some companies that are integrating different aspects this this is one of those things that will be important will be used and will be a very specific use case so um as as a little anecdote just on how bad this problem can get do you know about the shed at dulwich or not anecdote but just a little story okay so the shed at dulwich is this fake restaurant there's a documentary on this where this guy just makes it puts it on TripAdvisor, <laughs> takes it from you know brand new restaurant to number one in south london so it becomes the number one restaurant and he's never served anybody in his in its entirety of its career he picks up the phone every time somebody calls and says that they're sold out for months and that they can't that the reservation can't be gotten. They keep putting a bunch of reviews about how exclusive it is to get the reservation. And this thing gets to number one on TripAdvisor. And then he decides, fuck it, I'm gonna open for a night. He takes a bunch of res he takes a few reservations and serves people like frozen like uh, TV dinners. But he's, he like so he makes the TV dinner and then like plates it. And then gives it to them, and when they leave, they're like, oh my god, that was amazing. It really made me feel like I was remembering my childhood. Brent, didn't you say, didn't you, when you told me this first, this story, didn't you also say that he, like, blindfolded them? As yeah. Because he was just doing it at his house, <laughs> yeah. and he like, blindfold them and everything to play on the era of uh, exclusivity and stuff? Well, yeah, and he had to get them by a really shitty-looking area to get them into the area where, and make it clear that, like, he was just going past the house. So he had to make sure that they didn't know that. So he got him into like his backyard. He paid people or his friends. He might not have paid them, but his friends were up on the roof at a table like drinking. But there was like no way to get up on the roof, right? There was just, they were just like up there and nobody ever went up there to serve them because they're on the roof. So <laughs> they they had like this atmosphere set up and yeah, they would have like one group at a time come in there and then serve them. And then he, uh, you know, he didn't, I don't think he charged anybody, but... It was no, it, it is crazy, but hilarious. I mean, that story definitely shows how much the review system has gotten completely gamed. We are dependent on it. And you know what? I'm going to do a little public service announcement. This is a website that I got from Brent. He was the one that taught me about this. If you guys are ever online, like shopping on Amazon or anything, you could use this to try to use a little algorithm to see how many fake reviews or high quality reviews or whatever. Always. In a particular product. Literally, Amazon after is this, really bad. I never... Yeah, I never buy anything without checking on here first. You'd be surprised how many like five star review products it's have just a like D. an F. Yeah, or an F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very always double check right before you make the purchase. Sure, you can shop without this, but before you make so, the purchase, do this. It works on this is Fake Spot was the Trip Advisor. Um, this that's how they figured this out with their algorithm. 
Oh, wow. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, so as a quick side note, we did have a question in here. Do you guys think without regulations, mainstream adoption will happen? This is a question from Carlos Matos himself. Yeah, he's um, got a new, like, is that Sanskrit <laughs> name? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, uh, Car you know, Carlos uh, is very curious about regulation because it destroyed the uh, Connect, his last business. Uh, anyway, mainstream adoption will happen because... Oh, you're not Carlos Matos? We thought... <laughs> <laughs> oh man i we know you're not carlos matos brother um but anyway mainstream adoption is going to happen based on utility regulation is going to come and go it's going to be different in different parts what's really going to drive adoption is going to be utility the more useful blockchain becomes the more people will use it whether or not they care about blockchain whether or not they invest in blockchain just like the internet yep make it so useful that people can't stop using it Right. When when the Internet was, you know, in the 1980s, when it was absolutely obnoxious to do anything on the Internet, visionaries could see that this is going to be better. It's going to be useful. It's going to be what you need. But people were not seeing that because it was so difficult to do anything related to the Internet that even though it was probably better and it was probably going to change things and change the future, it wasn't useful in any way. So they... When the internet caught on, when the internet became ubiquitous in society, is when it just became better to do it anything on the internet ver versus doing it elsewhere. Cryptocurrency is super young. We're early adopting. It might not feel that way when you're like, oh, Bitcoin was 10 cents, but now it's 3,000. We can't be early adopters. You're absolutely still early adopting this stuff. And in 10 years, it's going to be funny that we, lo looking back, we're going to be like, man, it's so funny all the stuff that we were getting hung up on. And really, what just happened is now, you know, grandma's using blockchain and she doesn't know. So that's the that's the thing. When blockchain is better, when it's... Because right now, it's just not. Yeah, like, there's not. just not blockchain services that are better than non-blockchain services. I don't even know right, if there's like, one that I can think of off the top of my head. You know, yeah, other Brave, than... But Brave's not really blockchain, I guess. No, Brave, Brave browser is just better browser. than Chrome. You know, there's arguments as to whether it's better than Firefox or not, but the it's it's not driving anybody to use the currency it may when the ads come out that may be a good uh, a good example of one of the first things that's strictly better but for the yeah. most part the only argument you can make is that bitcoin is better money but it's not easier money or more usable money it's just better did money you see, did you see this uh link from grime lord one bitcoin address the 53rd largest address has been adding 250 bitcoin pretty much every day since November 28th. So somebody's accumulating. They are now have 14,950 Bitcoin valued at like 52 million and it holds 0.08% of all BTC. So someone is definitely taking advantage of the dip. Yeah, that could be an exchange. Uh, actually, the, Carlos just said it could be an exchange. The, um, the yeah, it could be, it, it could be an exchange, but you know, take a take a page out of their book. Accumulate what you Whoa. can. Hold on a second. I have a question, Brent. You're my Brave expert. Nice is telling me here that the Brave browser store doesn't take bot as payment. Is that right? I thought that they were, would like, be interlinked. That would be hilarious. That's really bad if that's the wow. if that's the case. I've never tried to buy anything from the the Brave store. I don't, I didn't even know it was a thing. So I, I see Brave rewards. Uh, uh let's see let me click this thing see if i can go there um shields up for the site yeah i don't know noted yeah that would be that would be pretty bad no I, like brett so brent got me on brave i have to admit i like it i think it's a good product that it's designed i don't really use the bot token very much um which is funny even as a content creator you'd think that i would but i don't enough i guess but the browser is good I'm, I'm happy with the browser I still use Firefox from time to time. I think we already covered that last time. Yeah, yeah. So. I I, the, I do have both browsers installed on my computer. I default to Brave. Um, the Brave is my default browser. Has been for a couple of months. I'll share this with you. I like their uh, their like startup screen that kind of gives you the uh, I, the idea of how many ads you get fired at on a daily basis. But that is from a few months of default use. Um, uh, it, it it believes that I've saved 2.94 days of time. Right. No, it is faster. And more importantly, 
I've noticed that it's definitely less resource intensive. So yeah, I do have a couple of softwares on my computer that make it work really hard when I'm trying to run them. And honestly, Chrome, when I, I can't really use it in parallel with Chrome, or I can, but it's significantly slower if I do. And Brave doesn't use doesn't seem to use even a fraction of that. Now, I haven't looked at the numbers specifically, but it, I do feel a significant difference. And nice. You know what? I am going to reach out. We've had Luke on the show from Brave, uh, Luke Molks, and we. I will reach out to him and tell him that the, the people are asking for the ability to spend Brave in the Brave store. I will also tell you that those water bottles are pretty sweet. Um, they, yeah, uh, are you talking about the little... The, the yeah, they're hydro flasks. Oh, yeah, those are pretty cool. I mean, they're not hydro flasks. They're knockoff hydro flasks, but they are... They're basically, um, hey, it's Elliot. Uh, they're they're Elliot. like they're those double walled, um, vacuum sealed. Uh, <laughs> they're the double walled vacuum sealed bottles that keep whatever's in there cold for like a day. They're pretty. They're pretty cool. I I bring mine with me on all the trips, and they look nice. They're like white with the Brave logo, and they're kind of cool looking. All right, so now that Brent's done shilling for Brave, <laughs> yeah. he's done his weekly God, Brave show. We have, you okay. know what? Brave is one of the people that's compensated us because they gave us these water bottles. They didn't give us anything yeah. else, but okay, that's yeah, like, that puts them in the top we've three. Bought, we've been bought by Brave. They gave us Hydro Flasks, <laughs> just letting you guys know, and two beanies. <clears throat> so, yep, yeah, that's we're basically true. Brave uh, billionaires. Anyway, my next story, Brent, and probably our last story of the day, even though Grindlord, we did see the crypto millionaire literally dropping $100 bills. Hilarious. Um, our our however, editor sent that to us. He's not like yeah. a crypto guy, and he's like, he sends this what to us, hell? and he's like, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> but here's, we're going to talk about your favorite cryptocurrency, Brent. It's time to talk about Tether. Oh, now, right. Was... <laughs> so the title of this uh, article is, quote, Crypto mystery clues suggest that Tether has the billions it promised. Wow. What crypto mystery title. clues. Yes. Yeah. So we are like going to play crypto that... mystery clues. We are going to yeah, play it's, crypto mystery clues. It's a game of clues, clues because <laughs> well, here's the thing that we all know. If you are a company that has billions of dollars, proving that to your customers by doing a traditional audit is really lame. We don't want to do that. You just want to leave a trail of clues. So that they can, there could be a little air of mystery around you. But anyway, let's see what Bloomberg has to say. So full disclosure, uh, Brent, myself, uh, and the Crypto Basic Podcast has been very skeptical of Tether, especially from the moment that they fired their uh, auditing firm. This happened. I mean, Jesus, now it's been almost a year. I want to yeah. say not really a year. It's like probably like eight months. Nine Damn months. near. It was one of our first like real big warning. Episodes. It was our first Basic Blitz episode. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Anyway, they hired an auditor and halfway through the auditing process, Tether fired them, which to us was significantly a red flag that Tether didn't have the funds that it promised. And essentially this whole time, Tether, it's we've been just hanging on by the promise. So Bloomberg writes this article that, you know, it leads off by saying, oh, yeah, there's been skeptics that are warning about Tether not being fully backed. However, Bloomberg News has seen bank statements that show that it is backed. Uh, and Bloomberg goes on to say that even though the documents don't fully show the finances, that there is important information which shows that Tether is in fact fully backed. So here are some of the specific examples that they give. They say that one statement shows that they had $2.2 billion in Puerto Rico's Noble Bank on January 31st of this year. Um, Link for, oh, link for the Hydro Flask. Okay. Um, so they had $2.2 billion in the bank on January 31st. And on that day, there were 2.195 billion Tether in existence. So according to Bloomberg, again, we haven't seen this, but according to Bloomberg, on January 31st, there was an equal amount, actually a surplus of dollars compared to Tether. And supposedly the numbers also match up for September and October 2017. I don't know why they picked those numbers in particular. The article also <laughs> confirms that Tether and Bitfitness are owned by the same executives. And that's why for a while Bitfitness became the only place where you could actually redeem Tether. Um, and then I was looking in the article for anything that was a little bit more current. And this is one of the last quotes. Or more substantial than Bloomberg said. 
Yeah, but that <laughs> no, we're only going to get Bloom said, you know, and then, oh, we confirm with this person and that financial institution and government agencies. And it says, quote, the latest statement from July 2018 shows a beginning balance of $1.9 billion and an ending amount of $210 million at the end of the month. So $1.7 billion gets basically extracted from this account. And Bloomberg explains that the balance dropped as the company shifted from funds from Dell Tech Bank in the Bahamas. Uh, to Dell Tech. To, to Dell Tech, right, right. So we've seen multiple banks in here. They talk about banks in Puerto Rico, banks in the Bahamas, a situation with Taiwan. What's really interesting is that when we were at Beyond Blocks in Thailand, we had we interviewed somebody. To, uh, Brent was moderating a panel. Sam Bankman Fried was the name of this person. Yeah, I feel like Brenton, If you get a chance while I finish this out, why don't you find the link to the episodes and link them on here in case yep. anybody wants to check it out? But basically, one of the speakers in one of Brent's panels is a high frequency trader. It's just a guy. It's these guys that um. Alameda Research a, uh, was who it was the company that they owned. That's right, Alameda Research. They basically buy and sell crypto, so they deal with a lot of Tether. And he seemed very convinced that Tether was fully backed. He's like, I've talked to people in the industry, blah blah blah, and of course. The room was very skeptical, uh, and it ended up between kind of a big fight between him and another guy. We interviewed them both separately. Yeah, when you say the room fair. was skeptical, I asked for a show of hands of how many people thought Tether was 100% backed, and we didn't get one hand. Literally nobody raised their hand. Literally nobody. Raised Out of like a 1,000 people in the crowd. Yeah, so is that both interviews right there together? Yeah, they're Brent? both together in the same post on our site. They're both just like 15-minute interviews, but this is a great – if you want to listen to quote-unquote insiders – having a very pro and a very anti-tether position um it was really interesting so anyway um l last thing that it says one of the things that i asked during this interview brent was uh i remember asking sam okay so how do these people make money right and that was addressed a little bit in bloomberg here because one of the bank statements the one for july said that Tether had earned $6.6 .6 million in interests mm -hmm. since the beginning of the year. And, you know, I hadn't really thought about this because I felt like in order to make any significant amount of money, they would have to invest that money because uh, interest rates tend to be so low on banks. But I guess the just the sheer amount is so big that you can literally make a million dollars in interest every month, even at tiny, tiny percentages. So... As of July, Tether had profited, like I said, $6.6 .6 million for the year. Now, what is the cost of running Tether and how much, you know, how do, how do they deal with that? Oh, see, that's a great point. I hadn't really thought about that PVT. So now, is your nation India? Since you said that your text is written in Hindi. All right. So apparently in India, you can get 5 to 7% a year in a bank. You cannot get that in the U.S. Not even freaking close. I, I want to say... If you can find half a percent, you're lucky. Now, maybe I'm just pulling that out of my ass, but I don't think you can get more than a percent. Ro Robin Hood just had that announcement that they were giving that they were going to do bank accounts with three percent interest, but it turned out they weren't really bank accounts. They were just kind of like money management accounts, and they weren't FDIC insured and all this, and they got like completely shit on for it. But uh, yeah, sorry, continue. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's. I'm seeing some other ones here, but they have different uh, balance caps and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, in the UK, you can get 3% on some accounts, but current accounts are normally around less than 1%. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I feel like that's similar to the situation here in the United States. Now, of course, you know, I'm sure a bank's going to give you a lot more money <laughs> if it's a bank in Puerto Rico or the Bahamas and you're putting in $2 billion. I'm sure there's some different dynamics there than like me going to Bank of America and opening a checking account, so. Yeah, you're gonna get negative interest on that account because you're not rich enough. Yeah, correct. The interest rate will not uh, compensate for the quote unquote account management fee that they take out every month, pieces of shit. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So uh, anyway, that's the story on Tether. Long story short, guys, don't worry about it. Everything is good. Uh, I just spoke with Bloomberg News. As you guys know, they're the most trustworthy source of news. Everything's good, so you guys can all go buy Tether. So Bloomberg is the one that has that service that you can subscribe to for like $15,000 or something. 
that specifically gives you all of the market information before they release it to the public. Jesus, man. So they're like, it, it, it goes to that thing it's called The Wire. I might be mixing them up with somebody else, but I'm pretty sure this is Bloomberg, where it goes to them and then they then they wait like an hour and then they give it to everybody else. So you get to like pseudo insider trade on their knowledge before they release it to everybody because you pay for their system. So one of the arguments that I heard for what it's worth, I, it, I tend to be very skeptical of mainstream media as a lot of people are. That's not to say, oh, everything is fake news. But, you know, you start learning that a lot of these institutions, they each have a narrative. And the way that they're structured from the top down means that, yeah, they're not telling every little journalist, this is what you have to write. But through through promoting the right people, you can curate the news. You can like manipulate what kind of editors there are and what kind of stories they run. So obviously every institution has a bias. I have heard an argument that institutions that are geared towards the 1%, so media like the Wall Street Journal, even though they have a very clear bias, you can often get some of the best information because it's geared towards the people that are making investment decisions often sometimes based on that information. Does that make sense? So it's geared right. towards the kind of people that you don't want to give uh, false information to. So even though it has its own bias, you can usually trust the factuality of it. Now, I don't know where Bloomberg lies in that. I don't know how popular consumption versus investment class it is or whatever. But um, I know we've seen Bloomberg stories in the past that more than raised an eyebrow. Yeah. Uh, and also, there's probably some consequence there. Like if you give false information that affects the financial market, from that standpoint, you probably can get in some sort of trouble. So that's another reason they're probably reasonable. Um, mm. I, 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 again, th it's not like Bloomberg proved this. They're just saying, yeah, no, nah, it's, it's cool. The money was there, yeah. But, but they're essentially though, because if you say that one of your journalists document, that means before you can run that article, that means that the journalists had to show their editors the documents and they had to internally confirm it so it's kind of like when one of these newspapers runs uh, a story oh an anonymous source in the white house like yeah you know you can't fully trust it because it's just anonymous but at the same time it's not like the journalists can just start writing it usually it means that you know they had to confirm with some people inside the institution inside the news service okay this is who it is and we have another confirmation and we can run it because if shit hits the fan we could prove that this wasn't made up yeah. Um, so there's something to it there. I think the argument we've always made from the beginning when it comes to Tether is we're not saying that Tether doesn't have any money and they're just printing money every day. But what we're saying is you can't trust, you can't give Tether all this power and assume that they will always just always keep a one-to-one -one ratio when they can at any time manipulate the market for their own benefit, especially when they are firing intertwined. Auditors. Yeah, and they fire the auditor, and also they're the owners of an exchange. So there are mixed interests, right? It's not like Tether is a fully independent institution whose only goal is to be backed by the dollar. They're owned by the same people who run an exchange who have different goals and different incentives, who want to stimulate volume, who want to maintain certain price ratios. Basically, it's just not a good situation. The incentives are designed so that eventually – those people will make decisions that benefit themselves and hurt everybody else. Uh, I just, I feel like that's pretty evident. And we are in this space precisely because we're not just going to trust centralized authority because we know how it ends up. Yeah. So I, I am not screaming from the rooftops as much as I had been with Tether because the bear market forced it into a position where it probably has the money right now. I don't know for sure, but it's less, you know, insane that they have the money currently than it was eight months ago that they had the money, you know? So like, yeah. you know, in the middle of, in the middle of firing auditors and in the middle of like printing a hundred million every other day. Yeah. I don't think they, I don't think they were fully collateralized. I think the market caught yeah. up and there was enough opportunity for them to almost buy back their own tokens at a massive discount that they may have made up for it. I don't know. I still, I would still rather some other stable coin be the primary source yeah. of of uh stable coins but um and, and brent like not only that 
it's not a coincidence that, I mean, look at the dates that I'm giving you. It's not like, oh, we saw the statements from January, February, March, April, June, July, and here's what we saw. No, 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 no. It's like, look, here's a statement from uh, October. Uh, just a random date. here's a date. statement uh, from January. This specific one. And then here's a statement one. from July. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like we've seen three random separated by months statements in totally separate accounts. And at that particular moment in time, the funds matched. Okay, fair enough. I can semi take your word for it. Still not fully convinced. And what about the other period of time? I Bro, appreciate. We got two minutes left. I appreciate that exchanges are integrating other coins, and I'd I'd like them to keep integrating other stable coins. Um, you know, Dai's even uh, decided to do some zero knowledge proofs. So in theory, it would be almost as anonymous as handing somebody a dollar. So. Uh, and one more question, Grindlord says it should be interesting to see what happens when everyone tries tether and that's another thing it's not necessarily that easy to get your tether redeem especially once you get to the bigger numbers right yeah they start so, they tr they start charging more and more as you try to cash out more and more tether the whales have to pay like three percent or something to to yeah. cash out their tether into dollars um yeah with the ideally when crypto takes off again tether is not at the reins because if they are, we're still going to have all of the same questions that we do today. If if true USD is there and they keep uh, up to date with their audits like they have been and like they say they're going to been or do or or Circle USD or even uh, Die or Gemini USD, if one of them is at the helm, it's going to be a lot easier to and a lot more palatable to handle another massive bull market that seems to be spurred along by a stablecoin. And with that ending monologue, we want to thank you guys for joining us, but we are coming to the end of our, our cryptocurrency event. Once again, this is us every Tuesday at 11. Actually, <laughs> next Tuesday is going to be Christmas, so maybe... Yeah, uh, we're, we're we'll, definitely we'll not going to have a Christmas show. <laughs> We're probably not going to be doing a Christmas show, but other than that, guys, we'll be seeing you Tuesday mornings. And if you haven't checked out the podcast, check it out. Crypto Basic Podcast. You can get it wherever you get your podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Elliot. Merry Christmas to all of you. Happy holidays. Uh, Carlos, a.k.a. PVT, thank you for joining us, my friend. Grind Lord, everybody. Thank you, guys. And, uh, yeah. See you all. Not yeah, next week, I, I'm kind of sad we didn't get to hear Juice talk. That guy was amped. <laughs> he was yeah, like know. ready to we'll, go. We'll see you next week. We'll yeah, see you he next better be week. back. All right. So, Take care, y'all. Thank you, guys. Have fun.